Good day, my name is Martin Schweiger and I will today walk you through lesson 1 of our robot patent drafting course. In lesson 1 we talk about patent drafting and in this lesson I will show you a very simple recipe on how to draft a patent application from scratch. Let's look at the structure of a plain vanilla patent application. This is what every patent application in this world has. In the first place we have an introduction or a starting point. Then we have a figure description which comes together with one or more figures and we have patent claims. This is what every patent application in this world has. Very often there is an abstract because this is a prerequisite when you file a patent application but that's it. In some countries you have additional parts. For instance there is a prior art description which is also marked by the starting point and also Sometimes we have a problem which is solved by the alleged invention. That problem section is not wanted in the US. Then we have a support section which is an abstract solution or abstract description of the problem. And also it gives a link between the figure description which is quite specific and the abstract patent claim wording. And in some countries we have a reference numerals list which shows the reference numerals that have been used in the figure description. So this is what every patent application has. Now what we need to do is we need to draft this and in order to draft it there's no way of starting at the introduction or the starting point and then drafting the patent application in one go until the abstract. Each patent attorney has his preferred order and I will today explain you my preferred order for drafting a patent application. I always start with the figures. The figures are the main point of a patent application because this is where everything starts. The inventor usually has some figures that he is using for explaining his invention. Starting from the figures I do the figure description and by doing so I also create a reference numerals list. Starting from the figure description I can draft my picture patent claims which are very very specific. Starting from the picture patent claims I can draft the broad patent claims and means plus function patent claims. This gives a broad protection for the patent if it is granted because the patent claims define what is protected. After that I would draft the abstract part which is nothing else than a patent claim put into some proper wording and I draft the introduction or the starting point. Usually then I do the support section which describes the abstract solution of the problem in the wording of the patent claims and I also use the support section to connect the figure description which is very specific with the broad wording of the broad patent claims. And I also add effects of the elements of the patent claims for better understanding the invention. After that I do the prior art description which is very simple because all what is needed is to take the abstract sections of the prior art documents that are available and reword them in proper language and put them up into the patent application. And finally if required I add a problem which is solved by the invention and this is how I arrive at the patent application. I will give you an example. I have chosen a very simple example namely a gearbox. You would see here we have a first shaft and a second shaft. There is a first gear wheel here on the first shaft and a second gear wheel here on the second shaft and the gear wheels are meshing here in this section. We have an input torque here, the red arrow and that generates an output torque. As you can see the output torque would be much larger than the input torque because of the different diameters of the gear wheels. Let's assume that this is our invention and we do a short description of this. In the next slide I have given you my reference numeral list and I have added reference numerals to the drawing from the slide before. You see here we have the gearbox. Usually we use arrows to denominate larger sections. So the gearbox 1 has an arrow while the reference numerals for specific parts are simple lines that go to the specific part from the reference numeral for that part. So the input section is also a section it gets an arrow and the output section here the 3 also gets an arrow and then we have the input shaft 4 here and then we have uh, the first gear wheel 5 here and as you can see in the table I have added two additional columns because these are useful if you 
want to use robot drafting, then the robot would know how to describe the cooperation between the various parts and sections. So you can see here already that the input section 2 cooperates with uh, reference numeral 3, which is the output section, and it drives. So the robot would know we have a gearbox. The gearbox has an input section, which drives the part number 3, which is the output section. And the output section cooperates with the part number 2, which is the input section, and it is driven. The same for the output section. The output section 3 has a second gear wheel 6, which is connected to the output shaft 7, which is here. And the output shaft 7 cooperates with the part number 6, which is the second gear wheel, and it is driven. In total, the input torque M in cooperates with the input section and it is input here and the output torque M out cooperates with the part number 3 which is the output section and it is output. So now we have everything together and we can start with our figure description. We start with the sentence 1. The figure shows a gearbox 1 with an input section 2 that drives the output section 3. And we remain on the upper level here, which means we first describe the figure on the section level. In the next sentence, the output section 3 is driven by the input section 2. Now one level deeper. The input section 1 comprises an input shaft 4 that is connected with a first gear wheel 5. Next sentence. The output section 3 comprises a second gear wheel 6 that is connected with an output shaft 7. The first gear wheel 5 meshes with the second gear wheel 6. Next one, we are already here, an input torque M in, that is input into the input section 2, is converted into an output torque M out from the output section 3. And this is our figure description. Now let's derive a picture claim from that. And all what we need to do is we take the essential elements from the figure description and put them together in the proper claim language. We start a gearbox 1 with an input section 2 that drives an output section 3. Next sentence. When the output section 3 is driven by the input section 2. This sentence is obsolete, but as we let it do by a robot, we just accept that it is there. Later we can strike it out if we get the output text. Next sentence. The input section 1 comprising an input shaft 4 that is connected with the first gear wheel 5. See, we are already here in the sentence 3. Next one. The output section 2 comprising a second gear wheel 6 that is connected with an output shaft 7. Next sentence. The first gear wheel 5 meshing with the second gear wheel 6. So we have this one here. And we're in functional feature given here, an input torque M in, that is input into the input section 2, is converted into an output torque M out from the output section 3. This is our picture claim. Just to let you know, a good figure description has three sections. The first one you have just seen is the description of the structure shown in the figures. The second section of a good figure description is a description of assembling the structure shown in the figures. By doing so, you would know whether you have assigned a proper reference numeral to all essential parts of the figure description, because you would need them. The third section of a good figure description would be a description of operating the structure shown in the figures. This would result in method claims. There's a rule here. Be specific as possible and leave away elements that are not essential for the invention. By doing so, you would get a very good figure description which is not too long. Now, Let's look at what we have done. My personal preferred order of drafting a patent application starts with the figures. Then we do the figure description and the reference numerals list. And the important thing is that we have already our picture patent claims. And by doing so, we have covered 80% of the total work for drafting a patent application. As we let this do our patent drafting robot, we can draft five times more patent applications in the same time as before, where all this was done manually. All what is needed are good figures together with a reference numerals list. And these components are provided by CAD systems, CAD systems, computer-aided design. After that is done, a patent attorney would add broad patent claims and means plus function claims, the introduction starting point, and also the abstract. Then the patent attorney would add the support section or the abstract solution of the problem, 
the prior art description is quite mechanical, can also be done by a robot, and the patent attorney again adds a problem with which is solved by the invention. Very often this problem is so easy that it can also be done mechanically by a robot. In a sideline only, how to read a patent, and my recommendation is that you read the patent in a reversed order. You start with the figures. Then you read the figure description, and if it's not there, you do your own reference numerals list. This is very helpful for understanding the invention. The next thing is, I would read the patent claims and the support section, which gives a link between the figure description and the abstract description in the patent claims. Only then can patent claims be understood properly. Then the next thing is, I would read the introduction and the starting point, the prior art description, and the problem which is solved by the invention. This is not very helpful, but you do it for the sake of good order. And finally, the abstract doesn't contribute anything to the description, but it is there. So, this is how I would read and draft a patent application. Thank <laughs> you.